I am going to jump in and introduce our next artist, um, somebody that, you know, a lot of the people in this room, a lot of people on these walls have influenced me in a lot of ways, either through direct or indirect, uh, you know, teaching experiences through their own work. Um, but there are a few people who uh, definitely have my corner and support and not just mine, but the community at large. Um, and so I would like to introduce Mar Marilee Schumann up front of everybody, and I will gladly ask you your first question. Oh, you have a question? Because I, 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 I have a thing. Oh, yes. <laughs> You'll work it in. Exactly. Do you have a question? I do. I would like, I would like to uh, ask you if you would regale us a little bit about your experience with um, finding your voice in ceramics, wow. and That's perhaps the hardest question because I don't think I have. Okay. So, or if there is one, maybe there are a lot of them, and maybe that's what everybody needs to know is maybe trying to too hard to find your voice is counterproductive and and you just have to go with it and and so for me i mean if you've known me long enough everything every five years or something i completely change and that's what i do so voice i don't know but i i do think teaching has been a really good thing for me because you can see i'm pretty nervous talking in public and but when I seems to me that when I'm like talking around a wheel things go a lot more smoothly so that may be my actual literally voice <laughs> all right well I wrote this down because I'm nervous and I didn't want to babble so this is what I wrote I'm interested in fluidity a lot of the marks I make on pots are about fluidity. This bowl, for, for example, you might say is a representation of fluid water, even though it is solid, right? Very solid. Or maybe atmospheric fluidity, I'm not sure. Or maybe it's just an abstraction of the idea of fluidity. But those are all, you know, variations on the same sort of statement. Um, but it's also very much an expression of the fluidity of the material. And um, for example, the glaze had to flow. That's the materiality of it. It's a liquid thing that goes on and it, it's a problem. It's a problem because you have to control it. You have to control, you know, the viscosity. You have to control where gravity comes into it. You have to control where it interacts with the background. So the the glaze flowing on the pot. Um, okay, sorry, I got distracted. Um, but before, even before that, the clay was fluid. The clay started out fluid. It's fluid, it's dry, it's form, it's hardened in the kiln, and even then, there's a point at a certain temperature in the kiln when a, um, the clay has to actually, you know, melt and, and re-solidify. And it's an interesting, crucial threshold there between the correct melting and not melting too much, which would end up in a big blob. So there's that aspect of fluidity. And then before that, all the minerals on the earth were at some point flowing gases and flowing liquids, fluids, rolling in a ball of molten material. And then, of course, as we know, some of that material, and this is my poetic interpretation of geology. I had a geology, a geologist in my class one time, and I was giving my poetic interpretation of geology. And you can not listen to this part. And, you know, I could just see his eyeballs rolling back. 
Anyway, at some point, the material became rock, and then it became clay, and some of it's still roiling around underneath the surface, especially around Iceland. But it's everywhere. Fluidity is everywhere. It's water, it's air, blood, seminal fluid, embryonic fluid. Our bodies are mostly water. The Earth's surface is 70% water. Time is fluid. Dancers move with fluidity. Music flows through time. I like to think it's a nice thing to live with fluidity, able to flow through and around obstacles, making things smoother. And besides, if you take away the element of time, isn't the flow of water more powerful than a continent of solid rock? And when you make pots, pots can be an expression of all those things. Wet clay is fluid and malleable and can take the impression of the slightest gesture. And besides that, pots are vessels. And what are vessels for? To hold fluids, or ashes, or cookies. <laughs> <laughs>